Hello everyone, Sheet Geek here, back with another video. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple stock tracker like the one I have here. For this stock tracker, all you need to do is input the ticker, the total shares held, and the average price paid, and all the columns in the table, including the charts, will all automatically update. So for example, if I wanted to add another stock like NEO, it would show the company name, the current price, and then I can enter how many shares I have. Say I have 10 and let's say I bought it at $30. And then it would all update accordingly, including portfolio chart and the holdings chart. So I'm going to teach you how to do this from scratch. So I'm going to create another sheet. So for the first part, I need the ticker, the company name, and the current price. So I'm just going to type in the headers first. So I need the ticker, company name, and I need the current price. For the ticker, I'm just going to use an example of Tesla. To get the company name, you can use the function Google Finance. And then we need the ticker, so we can just click on this. And then we need the attribute, which is the company name. So for that, it is just name. Then to get the current price, we can use the same function, Google Finance, and just enter the ticker and then press enter. And now we have the current price of Tesla. And I'm just going to indicate how many rows I want to have for my table. So I'm just going to select 10 and I'm just going to highlight it in yellow for now. Then I need to make sure that I copy these formulas down. Now you'll get this NA error. This is because it's trying to find the company name and the price of a blank stock. So to remove this error, we can use the if function. So all we need to do is add in the beginning if is blank. Then we can enter this cell and then we put two commas and then we can close it with a final bracket and press enter. Now what this does is basically saying that if this cell is blank, it will do nothing here. But if it's not blank, it will then carry out this function. So then I can copy this formula down and make sure to apply it to the first one as well. Then for this is the same thing. If I'm just going to put the commas first is blank this cell, press enter, then nothing will show up. Remember to apply it to the first row as well. So now if we enter a few more stocks like NEO, uh, Workhorse, Plug, AMC, everything would update accordingly. So I'm just going to double click on this to make it better size. So now we got the ticker, the company name, and the current price. Now I want to add my total shares held, average price paid, and my position in US dollars. So first we're going to add the headers, my total shares held, double click on this to make it bigger, average price paid, click, and we need the my position in US dollar, just like that. Then these two rows, we would input it ourselves manually. So I'll highlight this in yellow. So for right now, I'm just going to enter some dummy numbers. So let's say 10, 13, 30, 20, and then make this 40, for example. So let's say the average price paid is 500, 30, 20, 30, and let's say I bought it at $2. Now to get the position in US dollars, I would take the current price and multiply it by the total shares held. And just a pro tip, if you want to get this dialog box to pop up, just press F9 on your keyboard and it would show what the output of the current formula is. So to carry on, I can press enter and then it would show my position in US dollars so that I can copy this formula down. But as you can see, if you don't want to have these zeros show up, you can apply the if function like I did earlier. So if input the commas is blank this cell, then press enter. So now if there's no ticker symbol, then it will not show up. So next I'm going to add this 90 day chart, which I think is just pretty cool to have. So for that, I need to type in the header 90 day chart. And for that, I'm going to use the spark line function, then type in Google Finance, click on the ticker, and then I want the price of 90 days ago to the current date. So for that, we can simply type in today, use the today function, minus 90, then comma, then the end date would be today. So I'll just type in today. 
and use that formula. Now we have the 90 day chart, copy it down. Then of course we need to add the if function to remove errors. And there we have it. So next we need the portfolio chain from last close. So first we type in the header, portfolio change from last close. Now this header is pretty long, so what I'm going to do is wrap the text. So I'm going to come to this tool up here and click on wrap. So now it'll wrap just like that. So now to get the change from the last close, we're going to use the function Google Finance. Click on the ticker and we need the change. Now this would just get the change of one share which if that's what you want, you can keep it like this. But for me, what I want is the portfolio change for this stock. So I'm gonna multiply it by the number of stocks I hold. So multiply by total shares held. Press enter. Now I'm going to add the if function in the beginning to remove any errors. So then I can copy this formula down and it would automatically calculate it for you. So last thing we need is the portfolio percentage. So first I'm just gonna write the header and before I carry on with this, what I want to do is add the, the total summation at the bottom of the table. So I'm gonna write here total. For here I want the sum of these cells. And press enter. And then I would also want the portfolio change of these cells as well and press enter. So now we can go back to the portfolio percentage and to get the percentage of each stock I have in my portfolio, I'm going to take my position of the stock and divide it by my total position and press enter. So that would return the percentage and then to change this to a percentage format, just come up here to here and click format as percent and then it would change it to a percentage automatically. Now I'm going to add the if statement in the beginning and then copy this formula down. Now if you get this error, this is because when you copy the formula down, it'll shift the cells used down by one. So what we want to do is keep this cell as the same. So what we're going to do is come up to this formula. We're going to highlight F14 and press F4 on our keyboard to make it an absolute reference. So what this will do is when I copy the formula down, it will not change the F14. It will always stay at, it, at that cell. So now that we got all the data in the table, we now can apply some formatting to make it go from this to look like this. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce the size of these two columns as they're a bit big for my liking. And I'm going to change this to wrap text. Same for this one. I'm going to change this to wrap text, make it a little bit smaller. Then what I'm going to do is highlight all these columns and double click, and then it will automatically adjust it to a good size. Now I'm going to take these cells, I'm going to bold it, and I'm going to readjust everything. And then I'm going to take the top cells and I'm going to give it a blue color. And then I'm going to take the whole table and make everything center aligned except for the company names which I prefer to have it left aligned and I also like it to be in italics. Now I'm going to give this table a border including this, this, and this. And then what I'm going to do is highlight these cells by holding control and change them to a currency format. So I can come up here and click format as currency and change it to a currency format. Hello there, Sheet Geek from the future. So I noticed at the end of the video I actually did not highlight this column and give it a currency format. So you can do that right now before you carry on. And now back to the normal video. I'm just going to readjust some of the cells make the 90 day chart a little bit bigger, portfolio change a little bit bigger. Then to add the green and red conditional formatting, what I'm going to do is highlight these cells, go to format and click conditional formatting, then click greater than, then if it's greater than zero, it will be given a green color. 
but if it's less than zero, I'll give it a red color, just like that. So now I can see that if these were my stocks, I'd be down $75 yesterday. And then I'm also just going to add a summation of the portfolio percentage to ensure that it's always 100. Give that a border as well. So now we're done with the table. So now to add the charts, what you want to do is first highlight the table, go to insert chart up here. And first I want to add the pie chart. So I'm going to click chart type and change it to a pie chart. And then what I want, I'm just going to remove all the values first. So what I want is the portfolio percentage. So I can click that and I can see the percentage of all my stocks in my portfolio. Then what I like to do is come to customize, go to pie chart, click label so I can see it a little bit better. Then I'm also going to give the pie chart a name under chart and axis titles. So I'm going to call it portfolio percentage, just something simple. And then I'm going to resize it down here just like that then to add the column chart what I'm going to do is highlight the table again click on insert chart make sure it's selected at column chart and I'm just going to remove all the series first move all the labels so that I have a clean slate to work with now on the x-axis I want the ticker symbols and then for the series I want the position of each stock so I'm going to click on Add Series and click on My Position in US Dollar. And now we'd get our position for each stock. So I'm just going to bring it down here and readjust the size. And then for this chart, what I like to do as well is go to Series and click on Data Labels so you can see the exact values. And then under Chart and Axis Titles, I'm just going to give it a title called Holdings. Now we have the title here. So now we've completed our stock tracker. So if we wanted to add more stock, Ride, for example, let's say we had 20 shares of that and bought it at $14, then it would automatically update in our charts as well. And as you can see, Tesla's taking 67% of my portfolio now. So if I were to reduce that, it would update in the chart. So this is a simple stock tracker that you can probably make in about 10 to 20 minutes. There's a lot of more things you can actually do in Google Sheets to track your stocks. But for this video, I'm just creating a simple and basic stock tracker that you guys can create on your own. I hope this video has helped you out. And if it has, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.